everybody. This is my grandfather's worldwide stamp album that I've made from his collection, which he gave me. Uh, I made this video prior, but it was poor quality. So I'm doing this again, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, you guys will enjoy. Uh, we're going to start with a chunk of album pages from a 1979 Christmas album. And then we move on to his A to Z worldwide stamps, which I have uh, organized and cataloged. It was a long journey, took six months. And uh, yeah, I think that the other video was poor enough that I decided to do it again so that I could give you guys a better view of all the stamps. I do apologize for sloppy handwriting. I did write all of them by hand. So, anywho, hold on. I'll begin uh, going right now. This is... This is Antigua. To give you some uh, information here about the stamps. Uh, this is a complete set from 1979. Those ones are mint. This is another set. Uh, two of them missing from England. Here we've got Canada. This is a complete set. Next is a New Zealand set with one missing. Then we have Dominica. Nice complete set of four. So this one's missing three from Turks, Caicos Islands. A little history. Next is Grenada. Here we have a set that's missing two. Cyprus set here, complete set of three. Interesting. There's plenty of stuff going on in that one. Hmm. Cyprus. Grenadines of Grenada. This here is a complete set of seven. That's nice. <clears throat> the Isle of Man. Complete set of two. The Year of the Child. We have Malta. And this is a complete set of four Malta stamps. And the last of these Christmas pages is Australia. This is a complete set of three. Hmm. Let's straighten that guy out. So. Now we get into the A to Z worldwide um, stamps. Start with Algeria. This is definitely an older one. Oh my goodness. As I look at this, I mean, I didn't catalog the first stamp. Un 
real. I never knew that, you guys. Oh, the, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'll have to fix that. Um, there's a lot of stamps in here, and I can't believe I, uh, I missed the first one. Okay, that's a pretty cool stamp, though. <laughs> it's got a camel. Got a pretty old, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, we'll start with South Africa. Well, Africa is how I did it. So this is the first guy. I forget the name of that creature. It has a specific name. Just so you guys know, everything goes left to right. This thing reads like a book, this entire album. They're all ordered by Scott number. I wrote down sometimes different information, sometimes perf, sometimes millimeters. I always have the Scott number, the year, and the value. Uh, and then a lot of them I started writing um, the color. and uh, Yeah, it's... Uh, a little bit mixed up throughout the album, but nonetheless, everything in there is uh, identified to the best of my ability. Um, it was not easy. Those are pretty common. And the flower series here. Next page is Argentina. There's that pretty sloppy handwriting I was talking about. Something I could probably work on. So bad purse, I couldn't identify that one. The purse were so crappy. So yeah, they're all ordered by Scott number, and then um, at the back of every section is the back of book. That was how I did this, so it's pretty much organized as the catalog would have it, each country. Australia, that's number two. This is a the king took over, or the king was already had already taken over, and they were wondering why the first Australian stamp had a kangaroo instead of the profile of the king or something. So they quickly remedied that by releasing uh, the king's head on there, if I'm not mistaken. All the older stamps, it was pretty standard to have a, you know, some kind of icon profile of a ruler or royalty. 157. Yep, had to identify the watermark, a lot of these. In this book, plenty of lighter fluid. 
used to make this one, this album. <laughs> So this is the first stamp album that I've ever created. And so I sort of was learning as I went. Uh, okay, nothing there. Over to Austria. So offices in Crete. That's an official stamp. Whoops. See, this is a... What is all that I have? Official stuff? Wow, okay. Hold up. <laughs> okay, postage due. Okay. Then we have a war charity set. At least part of a set. One forty eight issues of the Republic. Interesting. Two eighty one. Wow. I I I don't know how I never noticed this, but apparently I ordered this one incorrectly. I man, that's so weird. Very surprising. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> I'm not going to correct it. That one's just going to stay on <laughs> backwards. <coughs> Excuse me. Landscape definitive. Different landscapes. Costumes series. <laughs> Postage due. Man, I don't know how I ordered this like this. Uh, unreal, I, but uh, that's okay. This is like I was saying. I was just starting out. Uh, these earlier alphabetical letters are definitely going to be more of my sloppy stuff. That one's pretty cool. Uh, a newspaper stamped. When I, I said type 2? Like, I don't know. Um, so, that just is me indicating. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a type 2. So, it should be worth about 850 and Perforate old newspaper stamp. Next is the Belgis Congo. Baluba carving of a former king. The Buanga Kokoma. These must be statues. The Gata Dinanasha. I'm just going to stop trying to say them. Pretty cool, they'll just Congo stamps, I like them. Minimal catalog value on them. Hmm. I like that one, the white rhino. Which isn't really white. Believe it or not. Hmm. Belgium. Starts with his earliest, number 52, from 1884. King Leopold next. The coat of arms with a little tab on the bottom. This one had the perfs cut, unfortunately. Belgium, some more Belgium. And then 
146 fawn color. Charcoal or something. Magenta. Deep blue, orange brown, Bister brown, King Albert. Hello, sir. The gleaner. Huh. She must be gleaning. I'm not sure what that is. What she's doing. <laughs> Excuse me, but uh <coughs> Okay. Olive black. Coat of arms with a Brussel overprint. Interesting. <laughs> Train stamp. That's all I got out of that one. <laughs> 1935. <clears throat> I use everything I can to try and find these things, and it's difficult. Especially in countries where I can't read their language. Uh, but, I mean, I really try to find them, and sometimes the way that the catalog is set up. It's just a real pain in the butt sometimes to truly find the right stamp in there. Uh, sometimes the stamp I need doesn't have an, a, a design image at all for me to see. Uh, basically it's just in a big block of information somewhere listed as a letter and a number. And I'm like, oh crap, you know, no wonder I couldn't find it. There was no picture in the book. It's just <laughs> tricky sometimes. King Baudovin, Baudovin. A fair bit of Belgium stamps here. Made a whole bunch of this guy. And finish this last page of Belgium. Hmm. Parcel post stamps. Hmm. Different color variations, different denominations. Make our way to Bermuda, which I believe is a pretty short one here. 262, Bougainvillea. <laughs> that was pretty short. Uh, next is Bosnia. And the black. Huh. A church memorial at Sarajevo. Check so. <laughs> that was it for Bosnia. <clears throat> it's a pretty, pretty short sections. Brazil. Mercury.
Bulgaria. Ferdinand. The first steamroller. <laughs> So ultra means ultramarine color. The hostel. Man, looking back at this, I remember looking this stuff up. That hostel one, that took a while for me to figure out. Golden girl. One mint, one used. Huh? They both look kind of mint to me. I'd have to check the back. But I believe what I wrote. <laughs> so, continuing on Bulgaria here. I like these mushrooms. They're cool. Olive green and red brown. Roses. Mountain Pass. Big old scarab beetle here. I think that's a cool stamp as well. Children of Hotel Children's Sanatorium. Interesting. That guy. Canoeing motion and Olympic emblem. Number 2068 forehead band. 2078 some skin divers. Memorial building. Head of Selenus. Looks like a serious fellow. Mother feeding child. Then when I laid sideways. So the International Children's Assembly is this guy. Ah, oh, yeah, I had a hard time finding this one too. Oh, those were tricky ones. Not mistaken. <laughs> so I got uh, Rabba, Rabindranath Tagore. Okay. 82. Next is Blagiovgrad. Blagiovgrad? National costume. <laughs> Tinker Generation VI <laughs> This one took forever for me to find too. These are actually bittersweet memories, these ones. Black and lemon. Yeah, these these earlier alphabetical letters, man, it was just a struggle for me. This is me getting familiar with the whole catalog, how it's organized. Didn't make much sense to me. I had to learn everything. Uh, it's just uh, tricky, tricky, tricky for a beginner. So this guy, I could not figure out. I have no idea what that is. If any of you happen to know, let me know. That would be awesome. Because uh, I think that I gave up. I just couldn't find it. So that's it for Bulgaria. Next is Canada. Start off with number 90, King Edward VII. Move on to King George, the Type 1. And then Carmine. I'm sorry, I'm going to switch hands here, guys. King George 
push the fifth. One sixty three. One sixty five. Liberty of Parliament. This one's surcharged here. Some black bars and a three. Let's move on to the next page of Canada. King George V. Different variation and denomination here. <coughs> they move higher denomination as we go. That's a type 2. I said there's a. The left tip of the 3 is above the line. <laughs> so these should all be type 2s. Everything after this, every single one of these is a type 2. Moving on, we have King George the Sixth. This is me experimenting. I thought maybe I'd like more space between the stamps, and I quickly realized it was going to be too costly. <laughs> I need to use up this space. These pages aren't cheap. Okay, so Parliament buildings. <laughs> Almost violent. Canada Goose. National Wildlife Week, huh? That guy needs to be straightened out. This was me leaving space in case I needed to readjust stamps later. A little too gracious. Number 326, Elizabeth II. Carmine Rose variation. Violet. Queen Elizabeth, different portrait. Canada. Three thirty eight. Had a few of those. Three forty. They are all used. And then three forty one, bright blue. Bright blues. Move on to number 376. Microscope and globe. Then we have Queen Elizabeth II and fish. And fish. Oh, there's a little fish. <laughs> Jet. Ottawa Airport surcharge. Interesting. Eight cent on seven cent blue. Lobster traps and boat. Atlantic provinces. Then we have a big old here. Liberty of Parliament. This pub.
postmark, 10th of January, what does that say, 70, mm, 1970, 70, 72, something like that. A couple more examples of that one. Okay. War tax stamp. Alrighty, on to Ceylon. That one looks like a perfin as well. So we've got tapping the rubber tree. You can see the watermark visible on the back. There it is. George the Sixth. That's all. <laughs> Colombo Harbor. See on that one, another example, you can just clearly see the watermark on the back. Multiple crowns and the script CA. The last one from Ceylon. It's a nice looking stamp. On the chili. This is the 225th anniversary of the founding of the State Mint. This one. The uh, International Year of Tourism, or International Tourism Year emblem. This one is a late addition because of this printed out label. This is how they will all be from now on in my albums. I actually cut off the edges too, so they're pretty. But, uh, yeah, I must have found this guy after the fact and then had to put it in here later. Okay, so we've made our way to China. <coughs> Excuse me. That ship is called Junk. It's a common Chinese stamp. This is Dr. Sun Yat-sen. Common stamp uh, for China as well. He's he's also a common figure on these stamps. This one's surcharged in red. That's the Shanghai General Post Office. <laughs> Plane, train, and ship. So that was the last of Imperial China. We now move on to People's Republic of China. Locomotive and ship. That's a nice looking one. Flying geese. That one's worth three bucks. <laughs> Train and postal runner. Alrighty, this one's called Mountain Sea. I think I had a tough time looking that one up too. Dr. Sun Yat Sen again. More variations the gentleman. And on this one he has plum blossoms. You'll see this one doesn't. And this one does. Rose lilac.
Light red brown. This stamp's actually worth eighteen fifty. Although well, maybe a little less because of the perf damage in the bottom right corner. I also think it has a crease, come to think of it. Uh, so that's a little hopeful on that value, but so this one's different because as you look at these ones, you see the little tiny zeros. Sorry for the camera. See the little tiny zeros for the sense? They dropped that and got rid of it on this stamp so it doesn't have those little scents. So that's a different uh, variation of that stamp. Different colors. Not the worst uh, face or uh, catalog values on these stamps. Some Chinese stamps can be quite valuable. So, oopsie. move on to uh, this guy, double carp. Then we have the same bright red. Those are worth a buck forty each, even though they're used. A single. Then I remember having fun looking these up. Uh, let's see. Folk houses is uh, what these are. So different folk houses. That one has a nice mint strip here. So we made our way to Northeast China. So that's from 49. So workers, a globe, and flag. I like that one. That's a pretty looking stamp. Make our way over to East China. I think that's the same stamp with the train and the postal runner and stuff. For a million variation here. Next, we continue. Maps of Shanghai, Nanking, um, Shanghai and Nanking. East China Liberation Area. Interesting. Kind of a nice looking stamp. I like it. Forty cents. Yep, that is what that stamp is. The train and postal runner stamp. Oops, did I miss one? No. South China. Hey, it's, uh... My Junker F13 over Great Wall stamp. Uh, I sent him my top 10 list of TED Talk stamps uh, YouTube channel and he featured my stamps um, on his latest video. And this was one of mine. I like that one. This one also has a overprint. There's some, some kind of secret mark on there. <laughs> I'd have to look it up and see. Not sure. Wow. I failed to identify this one. It's pretty banged up, anyhow. So it's not a big deal. So, also failed to identify this one. I know it's China because of that symbol with the circle and the line through it right there. Uh, but apparently, I couldn't find it. So we move on to Colombia. We got people picking coffee. Interesting. Guys up on a ladder. This is coffee cultivation. The postmark kind of makes it hard to see. 36. Nice, uh, nice cancellation. 
your mail. <laughs> That's it for Colombia. On to Costa Rica. Grandpa had one stamp, number 123. Columbus soliciting aid of Isabella. Trying to get some help. Come on, Isabella. On to Cuba. King Alfonso VIII. I always refer to this as King Baby Head. Um, but, uh, this is a fairly old stamp. 1896. And the next one, Jose Marti. Maximo Gomez. So, Maximo Gomez Monument is this guy. Statue. One, two. So I guess the RA is a revenue stamp if maybe not. This is a postal I think they are revenue stamps, postal tax. So that was it. Uh, on to Czechoslovakia. What's the next? So we've got a carrier pigeon with a letter, olive, bister color. Miroslav Tears. General Milan Stefanik. Julius Fusik, maybe? President Anton Zapataki. Looks like a scholarly gentleman. Jin Jin Drichiv. Jindrich of Arabic. <laughs> so that one's a hydroelectric plant. Alrighty. President Notop no Novo Novotny. Novotny. This is a postage due stamp here. Ultramarine. So these are just different denominations. And then we've got a timber tax due stamp on that one. Danzig. Huh. So this is actually the next, that's the last Czechoslovakia. So we have one Danzig stamp. <laughs> And then we're on to Denmark. Let's take a look here. The Royal Emblem. 1875, that's old. <laughs> King Frederick VIII. Okay. A caravel, that's a ship. So the wavy lines and numeral of value is the description of that stamp. Remember when I when I looked that up, I was kind of thinking, really? Like, so I guess the guy looked at the stamp and said, "Well, there's some wavy lines and a numeral of value. That's what we'll <laughs> that's how we'll describe that stamp." Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, two square columns next to the sail on the left. I guess that must be what dictates it being a type one, that particular stamp. That's a little damaged. So this is King Christian the Tenth from 34. The Ugly Duckling. Huh. 
from 35. Hans Towson. King Christian X again. Mm -hmm. So, we have Frederick the Ninth here. Some more. That's a nice postmark. Both of those actually. 58. <coughs> so this one's surcharged. So hold on, I'm going to switch hands. Sorry. Okay, Frederick the Ninth. We'll just art from Rebay Cathedral. Cathedral art right there, okay. Screenwriter and director Carl T.H. probably Theodore Dreyer. <laughs> so this one I don't know. Uh, it said it's likely from a Tetbesh pair, a uh, booklet painting sheet, sorry. It's not in the Scott. No watermark. So it's likely from a booklet. Huh. Deep green, stuck on. So they're stuck. So those are ruined, practically. Okay, on to the Dominican Republic. The Virgin of Alta Gracia. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> okay, we're looking down to Ecuador. Next. <laughs> so this is a landscape, I say. Kinda hard to see that guy. That one's better. <laughs> so Got some airmails here. Portrait of Washington. American Eagle and Flags. I, I have a feeling that, that these are actually pretty common as well. On to Egypt. So we start with number 96. King Faud. Faud. Oh wow, so I still need to check with a microscope to actually verify that this is a Type 2. I think I was waiting for the microscope when I was at this point in the book. <laughs> so I made a note. I was like, you need to check that later. I still have it. So black. Dark red. Ultramarine. King Farouk. It's the next guy. Off to Finland. That was it for Egypt. We start with number 41. It's the coat of arms from 1892. Off to number 405. And that was it. So, France. France is going to be a pretty big one. There's a lot of France. So we start with number 78. Take two. These are... Pretty common stamps. Oops. In this France section, we will have the first high value stamp of my grandfather's that I've ever found right here. Uh, well, that I found, period, at this point. Uh, he uh, had this guy, and to the best of my ability I tried searching around to find you know different sites like Hipstamp and eBay what this was going for and it's somewhere from 70 to 200 bucks so um, that's definitely a cool one it, it has value there's no doubt I just don't know what I would really get for it uh, but I'm guessing about a hundred bucks or something on to this guy from 1877 to 80 and we've 
got this next guy, brown, yellow. Got these guys from 1878, type 2, they're blue. 1878, so that means that this postmark is likely from 1894. That one's almost sock on the nose. So, a bunch more of the same one. That's a cool postmark, interesting. <laughs> bunch of different ones. 1898, that one right there. Bunch more of the same. Then we finish off those blues with these three. Next one is number 97 from 1880. Grayish. It's gray and grayish. Go figure. So this is liberty, equality, and fraternity. That's what this stamp is all about. 1929. <laughs> to a higher denomination of the same design with a different color. We have the rights of man. So this is, I can tell you, called the so Sower, I think, if I'm not mistaken. She's uh, like planting seeds or something like that. Hmm. Next vermilion variation. Okay. So you had a bunch of those guys, a bunch of different cancellations. And some more as well over here. Is the sower? I was correct. Okay. These are all going to be the same. One thing to note, if you can tell, <clears throat> before I continue, these older ones. Ah, here. Let's go right here. Do you see in the background the horizon line and a little semicircle with the rays? That's the horizon with the sun coming up. That indicates an older version of this stamp. And then once you get to these guys, you no longer have in the horizon that line or the sun. So I noticed as soon as I switched from here to here to this green one, you can tell the background is definitely different. This one here has a nice postmark. We've got a bunch more of those guys. We move on, this one is Cerise color. And we've got a type 2 of uh, the actual letters of the word postis are thicker. This one, that's what makes it a type 2, if I'm not uh, wrong about that. Sometimes I am. It's been a while since I made this. So. so 
So a whole bunch of these. And then we make our way to this guy. Type 1. The letters of the word postus are thin. You usually need a micro or, um, magnifying glass, at least, to identify that. Unless you got good eyes. Ultramarine. Yeah. Red brown. So. More red browns up here. A whole bunch of them, really. Next we have red-violet with a higher denomination. Just a bunch of those guys. And we'll move on to the yellow-brown from 1927. Uh, a few more of those. We have light blue and vermilion. Light ultramarine. That one's a perfin. So right there. So we have Louis Pasteur there. Joan of Arc. Next we have Mont Saint that's Mont Saint Michel. We got the Fachi woman. There. Dark brown variation here, dark red. Get a whole bunch of uh, the dark red ones. Yeah. So next is Arc de Triomphe. Arc de Triomphe. We have a bright violet stamp next 40 center a whole bunch of those guys we move on to the rose red which I'll spare you guys looking at everyone he had a lot of this rose red there was a lot That one, that's a nice deep uh, semi legible postmark there. Bunch of those, not done yet. There's a bunch more. Just a lot of those. <laughs> and the final bit of those guys. Move on to olive green. Number 272. And yeah, number 277. Nice looking postmark there. Wow, that olive one's worth 475. Hmm. I wonder if the perfin devalues that. Potentially, potentially could, if I'm not mistaken, on that. Okay, that one's worth 225. Jacques Cartier. 
This one's Cardinal Richelieu. Rich, Richelieu. <laughs> Very good. Bright red violet. Wow, those were the buck sixty. Surprising. So we've got ultramarine. Bunch of those. This is jewelry and metalsmith's work. Arms of Saint Saint Ong. Saint Ong. I don't know. <laughs> Marianne once again. And we have a whole bunch of Marianne. Next, arms of Lil, Lyle, I don't know how to say that. So we move on to some back of book here, Jet Plane, Mister. postage due here. So this is a revenue stamp acquittance, acquittance receipt. It's Marianne in a Fijarian cap. <coughs> 1892. One to three bucks. Huh? A meter stamp. Found this information in Wikibook. Wikibooks. <laughs> Tough one to figure out, I guess. Offices abroad, reunion. So this is like a French island or something. Cascade of Salazi. French Equatorial Africa. French Guiana, the Carib Archer. And we have an Anini postage overprint of that same stamp. French Polynesia on this guy. Spear fishing. Lightly mantled sooty albatross. Interesting. French Southern Antarctic Territory. Nice stamp, Grandpa. Like it. So, these. Um, so, these guys here at the end are stuck together pairs, you know, or whatever. Um, that. Um, I figured I'd put it at the end and I identified each one of the stamps as best I could. Some oddball stuff here. Move on to the next page where we're going to finally finish off France. Yes, on to Germany. So here we have a number 30. Parts are cut off, unfortunately. The buck 40 value on that guy. Number 81, Germania. That must be her name. These have fairly good values, these ones. No, 
number 100, then an orange, carmine rose. This one is the uh, has a lozenge watermark on the sky. I think these are fairly good looking stamps. I like these with the uh, different colors. of farmers and workers. Here we've got some surcharges. 15,000 surcharge, 30,000. <clears throat> the inflationary period. 50,000 marks, 75,000. This is a 20,000 over 200. We move on to 30,000 surcharges. 75, that one's pretty goobered up. Push green. This one, uh, mm. So this has, the perforation on the step has what's called a serrated roulette. Where, if you notice, uh, where's, this, where's my finger? If you, if you look right uh, at these perforations, they're not normal perforations. Um, the, just the jagged, uh, you know, jagged design of these perfs is different than a standard perf so if you look at this one next to it you can kind of see some slight difference look at the bottom it's very slight but there is a difference in the uh, perfs Four million, five million, ten million. Hmm, this one I said uh, about nine bucks. Probably not, it's in bad shape. <laughs> this is all, these, these values are catalog values. Which of course are just uh, not exact, but they're you know, generally what they go for and um, then you have to take every bit of these catalog values I've written on here with a grain of salt based on the actual condition of that individual stamp basically the values are either mint or used so, President Von Hindenburg dark green Carmine Rose. We move on to Olive Green. There's a bunch of different.
chocolate. Mmm. <laughs> Lots of Hindenburgs here. <laughs> There's that guy, we all know him. So, purple, green, orange, brown, we have uh, some guys reaping wheat, or it looks like a lady and a guy, laborer here, the buck 50, from 47 to 48, Cologne Cathedral, little vertical pair there. The Bradenburg Gate in Berlin. Numeral and post horn. So these stamps are definitely worth stuff. Uh, stuff. They're worth money when um, they're mint. This specific stamp is so worth a buck. Not bad. Well, not well, this stamp series, um, some of them in it. The higher values, so. higher denominations uh, have higher values. So. so these are all mint, never hinged. Interesting. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, some of them are. You can tell. Those are used, mint. These are all mint. That's okay. mint. So this is what is probably the highest value piece in his entire collection that I've seen. Uh, this, these are all $19 a piece if they're mint, and uh, so he's got 19 of them. So this vertical strip is worth uh, $361, right? Pretty good overall. Um, they definitely look perfectly mint. I will say though, when I found this, he had it folded in like blocks of six, so it was folded here and folded here. And uh, luckily none of them stuck together. But uh, let me show you the back so you can see how beautifully mint they are. They're immaculate, honestly, except for them having been folded. Uh, those are worth every bit of that catalog value. They're in great shape. So that's a, just a, been a very cool find. It's a beautiful strip. Thanks, Gramps. <laughs> that thing's cool. President Theodore Hughes. A bunch of him. Mm -hmm. Uprooted oak emblem, buck seventy five. Philip. Melanch... Melanch... Melanchthon? Ugh. Butchered that. Albrecht Durer, I guess. I Fluorescent paper. Hmm. Famous Germans. Hmm. Hmm. That's a neato K 
cancellation over there. What the heck is that? Looks like a man, like a robot man or something. I don't know what that is. Can't even read my handwriting on that. Dresden Brown. I'm 65. Lorsch. <laughs> Different kinds of houses and stuff here. Structures. Wall Pavilion. I'm 67. Mm hmm. Guys, we've got a different one here. We've got the Brandenburg Gate here. Some different denominations. Got issued for Sabria National Stamp Exhibition here. Nice. President Gustav Heinemann. Mm hmm. Got the 30 cent. And the 40 cent. And here's number 1078. Safety helmets prevent injury. I'm on board with that. That's good advice. So these are postal tax stamps. These little guys. Very minimal cal uh, catalog value. Um, took me a while to figure out what the heck these were. So they were on letters from 48 to 56. Uh, they benefited, I guess, emergency victims. And um, so this was helping them tax stamp, these little labels here, little stamps, occupation stamps, so AMG issue type 2, so I'm not 100% sure on the type 2, oh gosh, the AMG uh, eludes my mind at this moment, but uh, something about morning guard, uh, basically somebody took over control or something, um, uh, sorry, I can't remember. But uh, you could just look up AMG. Maybe I'll put a little something in the video here if you want to pause it. So you can read. Okay. Blue, green. Yellow, green. Nice. We uh, can stay up there. Red. Different buildings. So, different colors here. Those stamps off to Berlin now. Tempelhof Airport. Freedom Bell. These bells are actually pretty good cat value. 13 bucks for that guy. These ones are worth $32.50 a piece. German stamps definitely can have some decent value. I was pretty surprised seeing this. I was like, wow. $19.50 a piece for those. Ludwig van Beethoven. And we have a nice pair of those right here. So, basically I said, including these two and these two. Altogether they're worth $78 for the, the four of them. to Siemens. Nice horizontal strip of three here. With that. Back of book. So we've got an official overprint here. On that worker stamp. Got some official stamps. I should probably have moved that little slip over there because that's already an official stamp. Anywho. 
buck ninety for that first one. These are worth twenty five cents a piece. One twenty six watermark. So different official stamps. Uh, I think the only swastika he had was worth a buck fifty. So then we move on to mail labels. Uh, these were hard for me to find. I just couldn't. I was like, of course, you know, if you know what they are, you're like, yeah, they're not going to be in a catalog. These are just, uh, just literal labels for designating something as being, that it's going to be traveling in the airmail. So, that's what those are. Not worth anything, really. Okay, off to East Germany. That was West Germany we just did. And this is East Germany. It's called the Deutsche Democratic Republic, or Deutsch. Uh, excuse me. So, yeah, East Germany. Um, start off with uh, Ernst Thalman. Move on to some other crazy haired looking gentleman right there. These all have decent um, cat values. Except for the, these all. Machinists. A dancing couple. Next one is some purple stamp. Here they're launching a ship. That one has a five overprint. Twenty overprint. Surcharged with new value. And black X over the old value, I see. So that one's meant never hinged. Nice but never hinged example. So this next one, the first one here, is mint never hinged, is 750. Dove and East German family. Occupation and a little air post stamp there. On to some official stamps. Arms of the Republic. There are different types of this stamp. <laughs> so these ones have small fibers on both sides, which indicate it being granite paper. Great Britain here. Queen Elizabeth. This is his oldest one he had from 1900. Oh, Queen Vic. What the hell? I just wrote Queen Elizabeth, but it says Queen Victoria. Weird. Okay, I'll have to figure that out. But, anyway. 
King Edward VII. Pretty good cap value. Obliterator cancel. Wow, so that one, if I'm correct, is worth $50. I'm not 100% sure about it being number 146, but if I'm right, then that's cool. King George the Fifth here, book seventy-five. Pretty rough shape there. Scarlet. So different postmark cancellations here. Let's take this one. <coughs> Excuse me. That one's worth three bucks. Rough shape though. This is the Silver Jubilee issue. Okay. Edward the Eighth. Okay. King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth. Hmm. These are all pretty common material. Six. Mm -hmm. Thought that one looked red. Maybe it was the lighting in the room. It looks it looks familiar to me now. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. Can't see the watermark, so I'm not sure. It's either this number. I see the 292 or 317. I definitely do struggle to see the watermarks. On certain stamps, it's just difficult. So I at least labeled the ones that I knew I was confident about, and then the ones that I can't see, they just come at the end. It's just like, hey, I can't honestly say that I can see the watermark properly and identify those. So this one's type 2 or 1. It's just a struggle. Uh, the little paper being left on the back makes it almost impossible to see the watermark. Yeah, see? Couldn't tell any of these. It's just too bad. These ones I could tell. Dark purple. And a whole slew of those. I just could not see the watermark. So we've got next. 325. Then one of them I can't tell. <laughs> Parliamentary Congress on this blue one. Puck and Bottom from a mid nights a midsummer night's dream. Those are in good shape. Some more Shakespeare stuff. Fourth Road Bridge. Mm -hmm. 
got Post Office Tower and Gregorian Buildings. <clears throat> and then Three Kings following a star. Machin, the first of the Machin series, I guess, that he has. He only had a, one Machin? Holy crap. No, Machin, sorry, Jesus. Machin series. <laughs> so these, all of these, since there's paper on the back of these stamps, I can't see the watermark. And that goes for all of them. Just can't see the watermark. Too bad, so sad. These ones as well, I f just can't get a clear look at the watermark. So it's either 160 or 188 for all these red guys. So I'm close up, here you go. Yeah. Same for these, just couldn't tell. It's just a bummer. Yes, plenty of those guys. Yeah. Some more even. Interesting triangular cancellation on that. So this is number one sixty two A or one ninety. So they're worth a buck to four twenty five. Can't see the watermark. Okay, we've. So what I did here was these were the ones that are, you know, from envelopes pairs. Um, I've actually already identified all of these previously, so I didn't bother to write the numbers. So here's a embossed stamp. I don't know what number. I struggled to look that up. I guess. King George, this, see this is, um, this is from like an envelope, this is not an actual stamp, this is a, this is already printed on the paper, so, just to, could not find it. <coughs> Excuse me. Bahamas Independent State in the British Commonwealth, so this is where I lump these into Great Britain. Paradise Beach. Bermuda was a British crown colony, apparently, at one point. That's where these are from. Perot, Perot, Perot Post Office. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Hmm, this one's worth about thir 13. Next is the Straits Settlements. So this one I wasn't sure. Apparently it's supposed to be violet color, but it sure looks brown to me. So, interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is number 180. That was the end of it. That's the end of Great Britain was this straight settlements section here. We switch hands. So we've made it to Greece. Okay. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Thanks for sticking in here. It's a long video. Uh, so 1927, the Corinth Canal. Temple of Hephaestus is next. The Acropolis. Hmm. There's a monastery where St. John preached. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So, on to Guadalupe. He has one stamp, which dun -dun -dun -dun, I did not catalog. I wonder how I did that. Sorry. 
Okay, Guatemala. We have a single stamp here. President Barrios. <laughs> oh, more Guatemala. Mayan Stele at Quirigua. Okay. Butcher that. Quetzal. Pretty bird. On to Hong Kong. First stamp is Queen Elizabeth II, oddly enough. And we got some more of her. We move on to this guy. And then this guy. They're 450 each. That was it for Hong Kong. I do actually like these stamps quite a bit. They're they're pretty stamps, I think. So on to Hungary. To rule and crown of Saint of Saint Stephen. To rule must be a bird. Budapest cancellation. With some harvesting wheat here. Mm -hmm. Issue of the Republic overprint of that wheat stamp. Issue of the Republic overprint on another. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know, it's 404 or 425, uh, 29. <coughs> okay. Matthias Cathedral, I think. Matthias. Interesting, uh, Postmark there. Janos hmm. Arani, Arani. Some gentlemen here. Stephen Sacheni. Okay, I'm gonna stop trying to say these. Workers Brick Factory on that guy. Trolley bus. Mm -hmm. Diesel locomotive. Mobile radio transmitter and stadium. Interesting. Postage due stamp here. We're off to Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is a province of Austria-Hungary. Ferdinand. Duchess Sophia and Archduke Francis Ferdinand. Francis Ferdinand. Okay, and we made it to India. So, we'll start with number 81 from 1911, King George V. Switch hands. All right, so we're gonna move to this. A few variations. Mm hmm. King George the Sixth. The mail train. <coughs> Conorak horse. Okay. Tractor. It's 
one's bright blue. This is a map of India, is what those are. <clears throat> and this one's violet. Mm, this one's for family planning. I have a bunch of this one myself. Looks like you have a vertical strip of three of them. Tea picking. This one's called the Nat Plane. Looks like he has a bunch of those. Mangoes. Excuse me, everyone. Chandela carving. Off to his official stamps. Bunch of variations, okay. Okay. <coughs> this one's overprinted with refugee relief. Huh? So this is the capital of Ahsoka Pillar. All those ones that we were going through. That's what that design is. So here we have a overprint. Some refugees here. <clears throat> so, this is a from from Hyderab Hyderabad. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It's from Hyderabad. This is 1947. Official overprint on it. So we made it to feudatory state of Indore in central India. This stamp is Maharaja Tukaj Rao. Tu oh, Tukaji Rao. The third. Interesting. It's an official stamp. And that was it for India. We now made it to Indonesia, 1969. <clears throat> Statistic charts. Huh. President Sukarno. That's it. We're off to Iran. We have President Shah. That never hinged. Hmm. Pretty off center. Got more of him over here. We've got some birdies from Iran. Off to Iraq. Okay, so we've got Gufas on the Tigris. That must be a river or a boat or something. Number two. So that's the second stamp ever released from Iraq. And uh, he's got a couple more here. King Faisal. Something. That might be an official stamp in it. Says service on it. I wonder if I missed that. King Ghazi. We're off to Ireland now. Start with uh, this guy, number 65 or 106. It's Emerald, the Sword of Light. With about a buck forty, kind of rough shape that guy. Uh, next one, <clears throat> the map of Ireland. It's a coil stamp. Weird. Wonder if I'm mistaken. <laughs> Number one hundred eight. Okay. One hundred nine. They're worth a buck 
forty a piece, huh? Not bad. This guy, the coat of arms, worth three dollars fifty cents. Uh, I said it's nearly sock on the nose. That's pretty good. Cancellation, yeah. Okay, these were the buck forty each. Number one eleven, the Celtic Cross. That uh, same Celtic cross here. Yeah. We've got a red violet variation of the Sword of Light. This is a Leinster house in Dublin. Hmm. Whoa, this one's worth sixteen fifty. Robert Emmett. Statue of John Barry. We've got Redmond there. The dog from ancient Brooch County, Kilkenny. Hmm. Now these were a buck seventy-five each. Kind of surprises me. A winged ox from Litchfield Gospel Book. So this is the next one. Bird of Prey. Number 373. Nice looking stamp. We got Madonna and Child. Minimal catalog value on that. Franklin on Albany Essay. St. Mac Dara Church. Interesting. With a buck forty. Huh? Off to Israel. That was it for um, Ireland. So Israel. Let's start with 389B. Town emblem Kefar Seva. That was it. Boop. That was short. So we're off to Italy. Victor Emmanuel the Third. Interesting. We'll get a good look at this guy. Interesting, that one's redrawn, worth four twenty-five. This one's re-engraved and looks like measuring the millimeter height is what determines these stamps. She wolf, suckling, Romulus and Remus. Suckling up her little puppies. Julius Caesar. King Victor. Mm -hmm. Some purple ones. Mm -hmm. So, it says, may want to expertise. Looks, seems to me like the watermark is inverted on that one. Hmm. I'm either right or wrong. Maybe one day I'll send that in. So we got Mussolini statue here. This is Italia. This is United Family and Scales. Interesting. Next we have the Auto Mechanic. Hmm. Different workers. Apparently didn't bother to label what they're doing. There's some f somebody picking fruit. Oh, 
1950s now. Mm -hmm. Italia. Watermark is visible on the back. And we have another row of those same purple stamps up here. Next is this olive stamp, number 683 on the 786. After that. And he's got just a slew of the stamp there. Move on to 788. When he's gone of that, the last one here is this air post stamp from 1948. Italia, it's an authorized delivery stamp, that one. Hmm. Adoration of the King's stamp. Revenue stamp, I guess I couldn't quite figure that out. Another re re revenue stamp. This one's wheat. San Marino. This is a Cinderella. That's a universal symbol for tuber tuberculosis, that double red cross right there. Fascist area. So we made it to the Ivory Coast. I think that we've made it through the largest sections in this book now. Uh, Great Britain, France, you know, those ones were pretty big. Uh, Germany. So Jamaica now. World War I contingent embarking for overseas duty. A whole bunch of soldiers saying, Bye. Type two. King George the sixth. Bananas. <laughs> Harvesting bananas in Jamaica. <clears throat> so that was the last Jamaica stamp. Off to Japan. This is his his earliest Japan stamp, which is kind of hard to see here. Eighteen eighty-three. Nice cancellation on it too. I mean, geez, it's pretty legible if you can read it, <laughs> which I definitely cannot. So this uh, number ninety-two from nineteen oh one. I'm pretty sure that this uh, this guy, this little flower, it's called a chrysanthemum, if I'm not wrong. Let's see, rotary print. That one's worth 225. Those both. Hmm. One of them's rotary. One of them's flat plate. Old Dick, D-I-C. I'm not sure what that means, but... Hmm. Ooh! Bummer, that one's so ruined. It has some neat markings on there. Well, I'm curious what those would have been. Here. That one 
Let's mount Fuji. Nice cancel. Yome Gate, Nico. Some kind of gate. Nagoya Castle. That's these three. More Mount Fuji. Wedded Rocks. Thirty-seven. These guys are harvesting. Mm -hmm. Power plant. That's a shrine. <laughs> a cerro. Mandarin ducks actually like those. Sherry Den of Ngakuji. Chrysanthemum. That's actually the flower that I was talking about that is usually this design here on these Japanese stamps. It's based off of that flower. A map of Japan with the po showing the postal code. If one fell out here, what's going on? Oh, oh these are <laughs> sorry. Uh, these three correspond to these stamps. So. Mice entertaining and bringing gifts. Interesting. There's a man following a mouse underground on the left. An old man feeding a mouse. Right. <laughs> you would think this was a CTO from that postmark, but it looks like it's a real stamp. It's on actual cover paper. <clears throat> okay, so this first tobacco revenue stamp is the only stamp I've ever actually expertized or um, at least sent in a picture uh, to have somebody evaluate it and tell me what it is. Uh, because I had no idea. I just could not find any information on that stamp. Short story, it's from 1883. It's a tobacco revenue stamp, and it is not worth jack. But um, I thought it was cool. There's a couple in here I obviously could have sent in to have evaluated and tell me you know, what, what it is for stamp identification, but I pay five bucks a pop. And the other ones I just didn't care enough. This is the only one I bothered. And then this guy next to it, I guess is also um, some sort of tobacco revenue stamp. Pretty old looking that one. So this is Japanese occupied Philippines, these ones. Mount Mayon and Mount Fuji. That, just that one. Okay, off to Laos. Looks like I must have snuck this one in later because uh, it's all handwritten. I didn't organize things perfectly when I first sorted these out. Nice. 
Okay, Lebanon. So we've got an airmail. Barja. Pretty sure I looked for a while to figure that stamp out. Took me a minute. Okay, Lichtenstein. Start with some fish on granite paper for a buck forty each. Nice vertical strip of these fish stamps. Next, Lith Central Lithuania. Number two in the Scott catalog, the coat of arms. And another coat of arms, stamp and perforate, both of them. Pretty neato from 1921. Luxembourg. So Grandpa had number 83 here. Grand Duke William the Fourth. Grand Duchess Charlotte, Charlotte, Holy Family Flight into Egypt. <laughs> Off the semi postal stamps. Princess Marie Astrid. Holy crap, that just reminded me of The Office. Astrid, how funny. Okay, next, Madagascar. Traveler's Tree, 25 cents. We got some other colors here. Emerald. That's it for Madagascar. Malaya, or Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. So I guess this must be some kind of province or something. Named Selangor. This is a mosque at Crane. Kling? I think Kling? <laughs> That's a nice tiger stamp. Okay, we're off to the Straits Settlements in Malaysia. Number 218 on the left and number 223 on the right. Guy down here, George V. Hmm. 275, not bad. Nice looking stamp. Okay, next. Martinique. Alright. So this is the village of Bass Point. Bass Point, Base Point. Hmm. The only one from there. Next is Mauritania. Number 19 has the uh, guy on a camel, I'm guessing. Maybe not a camel, but a, some kind of steer crossing the desert. Mexico. So this is the Columbus Monument. Man, I actually remember looking this one up. not going to pronounce that, but another monument here from 1923. A few of those. <coughs> so this is Yalo Teca Indian. I guess is what that is called. One from 35 here. This one is the Arch of the Revolution. <laughs> okay, next page. <coughs> the Cross of Palenque. Interesting. Can't see much with these cancellations. From 39. Hands of Commerce. We make our way to the Puebla Cathedral stamp. 
Wasn't sure on the number, apparently. Probably because of the watermark. It seems like I can't tell the watermark either. This one also not 100% sure. Air mails. McCoakin masks. McCoakin. I don't know. <laughs> Few of those. Sombrero and Spurs. <laughs> okay, we're gonna finish off Mexico here. Construction materials. Mm -hmm. Postal tax stamp. With a mother and child. <laughs> that one's a sideways. That was it for Mexico. We're off to the Middle Congo next. There's only one. From 33 says Viaduct at Mendouli. Come to Mozambique. This is the Mozambique Company from 37. Nice stamp with a giraffe. That one's pretty good looking stamp. I think that about most of theirs, honestly. Thatched huts. <laughs> Dow. Off to air posts. So this is an airplane over Biera. Another airmail. And that's it for Mozambique. We're off to the Netherlands. Next. At number 56 from 1898 to 24. One of them, uh, oh, they're both perfect. Uh, never mind. Number 16. Queen Wilhelmina. There she is again. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Some brown, some red variation. Ultramarine. Bright red violet, this guy. I have a slew of those ones. Or Grandpa did. He's got the four cent denominations. Just kind of breeze through that. Number 289. Three oh four We've got a perfin here, Queen sorry, let me study this. Queen Juliana. We've got one from forty nine. Bunch of those. I like that cancellation. That's cool. With the numeral. Number 340. 341, similar to the other ones, but I suppose a different set, a different release. Different issue is probably the proper word. Bright lilac. 
bunch of dark red brown ten centers. A whole bunch of those guys. Whole bottom page finishes off with that. And start of the next page as well. There's that cancellation I like again. That one's also kind of cool. I wonder what that uh, design is. Almost looks like a fountain pen. On to number 345, where there's just a whole slew of these as well. Come to 346, Deep Carmine. And let's see if he had any more. Nope. We're off to dull blue and then dark gray. So he definitely had plenty of this Netherlands uh, stamp. Dark Slate, Scarlet, Dark Blue Green, we end that series, move on to Rebuilding Europe. <laughs> These are some cooling towers from 1963. This is Dredging in a Delta. Vertical strip. Okay. Hmm. So, <laughs> so the one on the left is either one seventy two or one forty seven. Couldn't tell which number. And on the right, I also wasn't sure. It's either 189 or 156. Usually the reason that that happens. I can't see the watermark because it's on this paper. So that's just a essential piece of information to properly identify those stamps. So, bummer. So we've made it to the Netherlands Indies up here. <clears throat> Number 128. Well, Wilhelmina again. That's a pretty sock on the nose postmark there. Must be from 36. June 6, 36, I'm guessing. More Wilhelmina stamps. So that was Netherlands Indies. Now this is a Netherlands New Guinea. This is a bird of paradise. Nice looking stamp. And then Netherlands Antilles, Queen Wilhelmina, once again, a different portrait. So we have New Chalcedonia, so this guy is called a Kaku. Number 253, worth 45 cents. That was it. So Newfoundland, which is a province in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know it says Canada, but uh, I'm not sure if it's a province or what it is, but I know it's in Canada. <laughs> so, um, it was number 116, this is a caribou. Newfoundland codfish. Hmm. George V. Prince of Wales. That was at New Zealand now. Number 131. Commerce. And then we got King George V. So this gentleman's in a field marshal's uniform. And we have a pied fantail and clematis. 
Clematis must be the plant. Captain Cook and his map of New Zealand. Let's see how close I can get here. Another one. Abel Tasman. <laughs> Elizabeth the second. I like that one, a kiwi and cabbage palm. Hibiscus. Let me switch this up, sorry. Hibiscus. Lichen moth. This. Christmas 79. Interesting. I wonder if this one belongs up in those pages. How funny. I gotta, I gotta check that. Hmm. Maybe that's missing to help complete a set. I'll put it in there. Uh, let's see. 1985 to 89 native birds. This one's also upside down. Sideways. The Maori Fiber Art. Hmm. That one's upside down. I started laying all these sideways. Hmm. Okay, next is a Kingfisher. I've seen some videos of those. They're pretty magnificent bird. And that was it. So, Norway. Let's see, number one that I have here is number 77 from 1910. Seventy eight, number one oh one, lion rampant. I would say he was rampant because he's got an axe, so as if they're already not dangerous enough. Post horn, King Hakon the seventh, fifty, fifty one. We go 52, a little brighter, looks like. So this one's uh, number 416 on phosphorescent paper. Ostrat Manor. Ornaments, flowers, wheat. And the final Norway stamp he had, the coat of arms. It's an official stamp, too. Nicaragua, here we are. So, uh, we've got the Leon Cathedral. Panama. Oh, so, oops, I found this later. So, yeah, in an effort to keep all of this alphabetical, these sections, um, I had to slip this guy in here. This is number 379, man's first landing on the moon for Panama. Looks like that's probably his only Panama stamp. So, so Nicaragua just had that one. And then Panama with the one. We've come to Pakistan next. So, Khyber Pass. Okay. Trying to get a better visual. Shalimar Gardens in Lahore. A dull green version. So this is Chotasuna Masjid Gate. <laughs> Got an official overprint here from 61. Another official overprint. That was it for Pakistan, off to Palestine. Rachel's Tomb, number 63. Yellow green. A couple more yellow greens. We have number 67, the Citadel at Jerusalem. So 
That was it for Palestine off to Persia, also currently known as Iran. So it says many counterfeits exist of this stamp, of this first stamp, and it needs expertizing. Wow, so, um. Holy moly, I forgot about that guy. Uh. So it's got an overprint and might be worth 300 bucks, but it could easily be a fake. Wow, that is super cool. How about that? I uh, completely forgot about that. <laughs> That's another potential gem that Gramps had hidden. <laughs> wow. So next is uh, Reza Shah Palawi. Pa Palawi? Magenta. And a yellow green. Boom, that was it. Off to Peru. So this is Laguia. What was the other one? Palawi. Laguia. I suck with these, don't I? So Laguia right there. Peru. We got one here. St. Rosa of Lima. She doesn't have a particularly happy look on her face. Philippines. Big old king baby head again here. From 1892. And we've got King Alfonso VIII, which I, might be the same guy. Just a little bit more matured. To a young man. So, Philippines here. So this is from 78. The Rhine, Carthus, uh, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it's a fish. There you go. Poland. Start with number 152A. This is Eagle and. Oh, let me get a good look at it. Fasces, symbolical of United Poland. Okay. That one's pretty tattered. Sobieski statue at Lawau. And we've got the Poznan Town Hall. Marshall Pilsdusky. Pilsdusky. Eagle Arms. Henry Sinowicz. It's hmm. stylized soldiers. S. Pilstusky. <coughs> so this is Belvedere Palace. A few of those. This one is from 45 in a city hall. I like the look of this one. I like that stamp. Polish Eagle official stamp. So another official here. That was it for Poland off to Portugal. This is King Carlos from 1899. We've got Prince Henry the Navigator, turquoise green stamp here. Pretty vibrant.
all for the nation. Grimora's Castle. Equestrian Seal of King Dennis. <laughs> Angola was a Portuguese overseas territory in the, until it became independent in 1975. So this is Ceres. Where is it? Imprint. Hmm. All of brown. So here's Mozambique here under the Portugal. Part, but uh, this is formerly a Portuguese colony back in 1919. Some postal tax stamps. the head of an aviator and we made it to Russia so this is the first Russian stamp he had number 91 Peter the first then we have Catherine the second that one's not bad at 425 catalog value <coughs> we have that one surcharged we have an imperfect here. Symbols of agriculture. This one is science and arts surcharged. Soldier next, another imperfect. And a perforated version. Pheasant. I wonder if that, that was supposed to be peasant. <laughs> I have a feeling. <laughs> that's not a pheasant, right? Let me. No, that's a guy. Okay. <laughs> Worker. Miner. Aviator. of the USSR. I guess I had to count that there were eight ribbon turns at the left. <laughs> Architect is uh, the end here. We've got the Kremlin Tower. Minin and Pozharsky Monument at Spassky Tower. So this is lithographed on smooth paper and makes for a sharper image. The 3257 Congress Palace. Soft landing on the moon. Boy, girl, and linen banner. This is a flag. It's supposed to be bright red, but it doesn't look bright red. Maybe it's faded. It's a plane and Ostan Kino television tower. Soldier and a Soviet star. 
and a steel worker. Peace, woman, and with a dove. <laughs> These are engraved. They're yeah, when I first learned about this, so engraved stamps, if you can't tell, you know, lithograph versus engraved, if you take the stamp out and you actually run your fingernail over it, you can feel, um, you know, the lines on the building. You can actually feel the engravement, like the image design itself uh, with your fingernail. So that was a tip on how to find out if they were engraved or not. Lithographed stamps were way, way smoother. Uh, so you, you basically, um, you could hold one next to the other, like this guy, this one's lithographed, and if you run your nail, you won't feel anything nice and smooth. And over here we have the same exact one, um, that you will feel the ridges with your nail. So. Sorry to say I lost my place. Let's go right here. See, uh, this is the same series, so uh, we've seen all these. These ones are, all of these are lithographed, and then all of these are engraved. That's what's going on. So, two examples of the same stamp. And we have this one, semi-postal stamp. And so this is a semi-postal. Ilya Muromets, legendary Russian hero. That one's worth eight fifty. Looks pretty well mint to me. Oopsie. Okay, so he had this uh, in this glassine, and I took it out so it could be viewed a little bit better. It's worth two bucks. From 88, complete set of five, plus something, a oh, label. It's a nice mint block there. So we've got next the Far Eastern Republic. It was a short-lived government established in 1920. This is the Vladivostok issue. Surcharge 5K on 10R. Imperforate from 23. Then we have White Russia. So, uh, so this is also Belarus. Uh, 1920. So there's no Scott number. So it's not in the catalog. Five denominations were put in use. There were many forgeries. So potentially a forgery. We've got the Ukrainian so uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. It's a semi-postal. It's death stalking a peasant. Well, that's uh, just an uplifting stamp right there. <laughs> We've got um, famine. That's another one. Another semi-postal. like they're just getting slayed by death. So, um, we have Tanu Tuva here. This is a camel caravan stamp. Very uh, nice design. From 34, and then we have another one. Herdsman Lassoing Reindeer. Number 51 from Tanu Tuva. That was it for Tanatuva. We're off to Saint Pierre and Miquelon. That was my hand, if you were wondering. Okay, the map and fishermen. Then we have Saint Malo fishing schooner. That was it, Salvador. Next. Just one. Number 563, Dr. Tomas G. Palomo. We have Monument of Gerardo Barrios. Oh, there 
numbers too. And then we have Singapore next. So a whole block here. This is a three-way L Delta Arcuata. And that was it for Singapore. We have Somali Coast here. Start with number 80, Drummer. That was it. Spain here. The King Baby Head again, Mr. Alfonso the Eighth. Alfonso the Eighth again. I like this one. So there's a blue control number on the back of that stamp. <laughs> Minimal catalog value. King Alfonso type 2 control number is on the back of that as well. This one has no control number. Pablo Iglesias. <laughs> General Francisco Franco. variation of the, the same stamp, different perfs. You can actually visually tell. General Franco again. Popular guy. Deep orange. So that was it. Next is Suriname. Suriname. Queen Wilhelmina once again. And Sweden is next. King Gustav the Fifth. <laughs> Perf ten vertically. Postal runner here. Sock on the nose. Yeah. Nice stamp. dollars. Modern Swedish liner. Gustav the sixth. <laughs> Adolf. Gustav Adolf the sixth. I'm sp uh, assuming. Different perfs, maybe nope. Want different years? They look pretty similar. Hmm. Ultramarine perf on three sides. Interesting. They all look quite similar, but there must be minute uh, differences here. Besides the perfs. Rock carvings, eh? Then we got King Carl the uh, 16th from 86 to 89. King Carl Gustav the 16th. Switzerland. Dove on broken sword. Got Chillon Castle, St. Goddard Railroad, Lake Lugano. We have viaducts. Okay. 
These ones are a mountain railway. Reservoir Grimsel Type 2 Some sort of reservoir area well, That's a nice almost sock on the nose postmark from 52 Number 336 Harbor of the Rhine Here we have Messenger Freeborg Type 1 from 1960. Granite paper. And then this one is just a variation that has violet fibers and is fluorescent. Messenger Schwiz. So this is, this, these ones are non-fluorescent granite paper. It's pink ones. Postillion on horseback. So these ones happen to be fluorescent and they're type 1 at the bottom. So off over here to Gross Monster Church in Zurich. Fluorescent as well. Then we have the Cathedral Geneva. We have some stamp there. <laughs> and this one I couldn't find, so I'm not sure what that was. I think it had the perfs cut, maybe not. Actually, the paper is like, um, not regular paper. It's thicker, harder. Off to Thailand here. So we start with number 283, King Boomable Adulia Yikes. Tough for me to say that. Okay. I like the stamps, honestly. They look nice. Nice color. This one's red orange with a buck each. From the 63, a woman harvesting rice. Number 375, malaria eradication emblem and Siamese designs. This is new and old post and Te uh, telegraph buildings worth a buck seventy five, not bad. Used. Dark green, carmine, orange. Child with dolls. Sorry if you guys can hear my stomach's kind of growling. Making all kinds of noise. Garuda carrying a letter. Thai women writing letters. <laughs> okay. A fair bit of Thailand. That's kind of surprising. <clears throat> King Boomer Ball. Four dollars. Number 420. The next is a UNICEF emblem. And we got Togo. Boom, number 216 is a coconut grove. We have another one, different denomination. So we move to Trinidad and Tobago. He has one stamp. Number 34 from 1936 says First Boca. Postage and revenue stamp. That's a pretty stamp. We've got Turkey here. 
President Ismet Inonu. This one is the 400th anniversary of poet Fuzuli. Fuzuli. Fuzul. Kemal Ataturk. Okay. One final turkey stamp here. It's an official stamp, it's a leaf design. <laughs> so, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanganyika. Mount Kilimanjaro. There goes my stomach. <laughs> Cavirondo cranes. That was it. Off to Ukraine. So this was issued by Ukrainian National Republic. Never issued. Red Army defeated UNR. So it was issued by the UNR. But the Red Army defeated them. They're called the Vienna issue. It's a set from a set of fourteen from a set of fourteen. That is these guys right here. So they were issued. They were never issued. Printed but never issued. Interesting stuff. The Red Army took them over. Never got to use them. Uruguay. Yugoslavia. Start with number one in the Scott catalog, King Alexander. Different King Alexander design here. This one's King Peter II as a young boy, it looks like. Fruit growing, it's lithographed, so it should be a smooth stamp. Overpass. I don't think I had an easy time figuring that one out. Sevojno Copper Works. <laughs> My goodness. We've come to the end. It's Slovenia. This is called the Chain Breaker. Cool stamps. So that's the end of the album. Um, yeah, to actually go through and catalog every one of these stamps took me six months and uh, created this beautiful album. Uh, at the end here, these pages are all just uh, taken from, he had this Captain Tim's stamp album. The pages literally fall apart when you try to turn them, so I took actually cut them all out and put them in these plastic covers. Uh, that way you can see them. Now, I did actually go through and try to identify some of these, but the truth and reality of every one of these stamps is that um, they're ruined because they're completely stuck on these pages. So, um, I'm just going to kind of breeze through these. I could never get these off the pages. And I think, sadly enough, uh, I can't remember which one, but uh, one of them actually could have had a good, fa uh, good value. And it's stuck.
one from the uh, with the Chad overprint. is just going off right now. <laughs> I feel fine though. <laughs> what the heck? King Baby Head again there. Coupon. Yeah, see there's a lot of these. Um, some Columbia. stuff is, uh, most of the stuff is regular, nothing special. Put the Dominica. I cut the pages out if they had at least one stamp on there. Just a telegraph stamp. Yeah, every time I would try to use these pages, they would just crumble into dust. It's a shame. But doing this, at least I can uh, view them now. Bunch of common France stuff here. Interesting. So that one's actually a 1871 quittance stamp. I was kind of hoping it would be something special when I saw it, but apparently it has minimal catalog value. That one actually is already on paper, so I could just take that off if I wanted, but I'll leave it in there. So yeah, uh, my goal was to catalog every single stamp that my grandpa owned, and the thing is, I wouldn't bother with these. I already, I already did these earlier in the album. There's no point in me. Bothering again. Let me ask one down here. Protectorate. Morocco. He's got Sudan. Francais. Africa Equatorial. Gabon. Germany stuff here. A bunch of fairly common Germany, some inflationary period stuff here. Four million, nothing too crazy. So this one's cool. It could have been twenty-two fifty. Pretty neat looking stuff. Nothing particularly special. And this is Greece. <laughs> Just a couple stamps there. Guatemala. Postal tax stamp. Hungry. So India. Jeez. All right. So. <laughs> 
This guy only had one. Indochina. This is Jamaica. Can't see the watermark, that's right. So, nothing too special. Here we've got one lot via stamp. This one actually escaped my vision the first time I did these, and uh, really came back later. I was like, "Oh my God, there is a stamp there." Blended in so well. There we have Mexico. U.S. Possession, Philippines. <laughs> ah, there you go. See, this one could have been worth 110 bucks. Philippine Islands, United States of America. But it's stuck. if you came with me on this because I know it took a while but yeah this was a huge labor of love I'm so glad that I'm done I just basically have this awesome album as a tribute to my grandpa and keep to the rest of my life uh, because I like it and um, yeah it's a good thing Some super common United States stuff here, so I honestly, <laughs> I just skipped all that. This is supposed to be as worldwide, not as United States anyways. These just so happen to be in this album, so. Super common stuff. Boston Mass. And the final two stamps are going to be South Africa. So that does it for my grandpa's worldwide stamp album. I hope you all enjoyed, and um, I'll see you in the next videos. Take care.